G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now if you've been watching lately, you would have seen me build the Revel 172nd scale S100 Schnell boat. And I've been having a ball with this, thoroughly enjoying the kit. It is really, really nice. Now I've only got a few things left to do on it and I'll finish it off in the next week or so. But as promised, I'm going to show you some more because there's other Schnell boats out there that you can buy in this scale. I've already reviewed, well obviously the S100 from Revel, the review for that. Big thing up here you can click. I've also reviewed just recently the Four Hobbies S38, which is an earlier version of this Schnell boat. It's about the same size. But another one that I have in my stash we've never looked at until now. So let's have a peek. And this, of course, is the classic airfix kit of the German e-boat. Now, an e-boat is a schnell boat, right? It's just the, what the Allies called them were enemy boats, okay? But the Germans called them schnell boot, right? Schnell fast boot boat, okay? Fast boat. They were fast motor torpedo boats, all right? So torpedoes in front. But this is a very early version. This is an S7. That's the designation on it. And it's a little bit shorter. It's a little different. It doesn't have the cover at the front, like uh, my other S-boats that I'm building. Lots of different things. It's only got the one AA gun basically there on the stern, and it's got a whole lot of things that it's dropping off its bum here. Yeah, we'll talk about those in a sec. But this is a 1975 original white box. Took me a while to find one of these. They have been reboxing this right up until 2016, and that'll be a red box. But if you get one of those, that mould is pretty old, right? You know, you're talking a 45-year-old mould, you know, nearly. And, yeah, it's getting a bit soft, it's getting a bit rooted. You've got to go back all the way to 1975 to find the original one like this. Now, here's something new. It looks similar to the S100 that I'm building, but it's not. Believe me, no, it's got a Flak 38, and it's all about the machine gun at the rear, and I will show you that. It's a big quad thing, right? It's a quad sort of machine gun. A lot of it's similar, a lot of it's different. So this is a different Revel Schnell boat, but this is the S100 again, okay? Now the basis of this kit first came out in 2001, which is the version that I'm building currently, but I'm building a 2019 uh, press of the mold, which is still in reasonably good condition. So, you know, kudos to Revel because they haven't really let that bugger up in the mold. This one, however, this is from 2006. So this is actually an older kit than the one I'm building now, even though the one I'm building now was molded before it. I know, it gets very confusing, doesn't it? It gets very confusing. But this is a good one for us to look at because it'll be slightly different to what I've already reviewed. And this is the one that I just recently reviewed, the Four Hobby Schnellboat S38. Now, this particular model, the version of the Schnellboat, sits in between the Airfix S7 and the Revel S100, okay? It's about the same length as an S100, but it's quite different. There's different things. Totally different cabin. Doesn't have the armoured cabin. whole lot of things, and I'll explain all that to you as we go through the comparison. This is a 2021 edition kit. So it is brand spanking new. And you would have seen the review. If not, yes, click up here, the link to the review for the S38. So we've got three Schnell boats. They're all about the same size. They're all exactly the same scale. They range from 1975 all the way up to 2021. That's a long time. That's nearly 50 years. Think about it, right? Yes, that's nearly half a century of plastic molding. How much has it changed from the Airfix kit to the Revel kit to the 4 kit? It's changed a lot, but has it got any better? So in this video, I'm going to look at all three kits and then say, well, which would be the one that's more fun to build? Which one would be easier to build? Does the new technology really give you a better experience? Or is it all just a big tug because it's just all overdone and 3D and, you know, and, and, and what's the name, molded, slide molded and CAD designed? Who cares? As a model, which one would I build if I could only build one? Want to know that? All right, roll the music. If you're enjoying my content on YouTube and you would like to see more videos looking at kits like this and my sailing ship builds and my battleship builds and all that sort of thing, then please 
hit the like button on this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification so you get notified when my videos are out. But you can also now join, you can join my YouTube members and then you'll get access to merchandise, right? Yay, t-shirts, mugs, crap like that. But you'll also get to see my videos early and advert free and you'll get special live broadcasts, interviews with other modelers, tips and tricks, stuff that the uh, basically the general great I washed out there that I get to see, right? Doesn't cost much, little as $3 US a month, you can get into that. Or you can go to Patreon, they've been enjoying those benefits for over a year now. And my Patreons, yeah, get videos early, advert free, and they get access to the merch, behind the scenes actions, talk to me, all kinds of stuff. Three kits, 1975, okay, 2006, 2021. We've got half a century here. All right, so what are you going to basically shell out for this stuff? Okay. The e-boat in Australia, you can pick one up for about 50 Aussie dollars in reasonable nick. Might not be a white box. Now that is about $35 US, all right? So in my shekel money, Five shekels. I'll continue to talk in shekels because it's an easy way to do the comparisons. Shekel conversion chart, right? You can work it out yourself. But basically, we'll, we'll talk shekels. So, a five shekel kit, okay? Now, I couldn't get the white box for that. No, an original white box is going to cost you 10 shekels or more, twice the price, okay? This one cost me seven shekels. And the reason is it's got a little hole in the box. You can't see it, but there's a slight hole in the box down here. And that has ruined its collectability. But I'm not basically getting this kit to collect. I want to build it. So I didn't care if there's a little hole. The bag has also got a hole in it and parts have basically escaped, which is to be expected with a half century old Airfix kit. So I still don't know if parts are missing, but I'm pretty good at scratch building stuff, so I don't care. All right, so you probably get one for that five shekels plus postage. Now, Revel jumping into the 21st century, okay? Lovely kit. The original ones, you'll pick up anything from two shekels up to five shekels. They're all over the place. It depends what people want. People are just giving them away sometimes. Now, this one, which was the 2006 one, which is the one that's well sought after because there's not as many out there because it's got the quad gun on the back. It's slightly different. This one cost me four shekels. So it was actually cheaper than this. And I think the um, S100 that I got off Amazon, the one that arrived totally wrecked and rooted, is a photo. That's what Kentucky Amazon do to a kit. They just basically chuck a sticker on the box, throw it in the mail, and hope that it'll make it all the way to Australia. Friggin' dickheads! And it did, surprisingly. The box was an absolute mess, covered in tape. But surprisingly, all the parts were in it. And I've built it, as you've seen. But still, it's very disheartening when you see, you know, your box absolutely destroyed when it arrives. The um, courier guy put it down and ran because he thought probably if I'd been there, he would have been subject to my wrath. Yes, anyhow. So, okay, you probably get one of these, you know, four, five, whatever. I paid six all up with postage, but this has got the photo itch in it as well. That was now a bonus. That's not in the kit normally. And that's the Edward photo etch, which I really love. Talk about that later. Now, all the way to 21st century, 2021, four. Brand new kit. I've reviewed it. If you've seen that, you know it's fantastic. There's all slide molding. It's got photo etch. It's got everything. It's songs. It dances. It's got the works. It's a terrific kit. And what are you going to pay for this? Well, it's about a 10 shekel kit plus posting. And out of China, I paid about three shekels for post. Okay, so, you know, you're not going to get it any other way unless you happen to be on holiday in China and you can find a store. So it's going to be about a 13 shekel kit. And the same here, you're going to expect a little bit of post for this, depending where you get it from. So five shekels plus post, anything from two to four shekels, six, if you get it for you, basically including the post and you might get photo etch. And then it jumps all the way to 10 shekels. Okay, so that is 70 US dollars, $35 US all the way up to $70 US. So the price has doubled. But you get all the photo etch with this and the brass barrels and the wire and a whole lot of stuff. For my Revel S100 that I've just built, I had to buy the photo etch and I had to buy the wire and I bought all the extra stuff. So I spent another five shekels on my kit. So actually my S100, as you saw at the beginning, I've spent as much on it as the 4 kit. But the 4Kit, you don't even have to go around searching for aftermarket. 
everything's there. So that's kind of your price range. Now, aftermarket for the eBay is a little bit tricky. There's just not much out there. There might be a photo etch kit, I can't remember. I'll double check on that. But it's, um, it's not an easy kit to get any aftermarket for. You can get the barrels because basically 20 millimeter flak barrels are pretty generic and you can get them. But as for anything else, well, you know, you're hard pressed. So that is the range. Let's start with the Airfix kit because it's one of the three that I have never really looked in detail. And I think that's the one that you'd like to see because it's quite rare. Now the Airfix kit, despite its age, I still think has some very nice box art. It's um, all those Airfix kits had beautiful artwork on them going right back. Uh, this is the thing. This was the appeal when I was younger. You'd go to the store and these beautiful drawings were there and then of course there's all the plastic parts. So to use your imagination, you just look at the picture and go, oh, I'm going to build that. Okay. Often wasn't always the case. It didn't quite turn out as good as the picture, but Airfix have always had lovely artwork. So I think it still holds up even today. You get a lovely side view of what it's going to look like. Same thing, box art just repeats itself. And I don't know if that's an alternate colour scheme or well, that's just the other side. So look, it's the same. Yeah, it's basically the same. All right, so top opening box, standard Airfix, fair. And in the box, as always with Airfix, it's as loose as buggery. There's one bag which was tight originally, half a century ago, but now it's all loose and there'll be a hole in it because, yeah, hulls always poke holes in your bags. And so some of the kits would have gone overboard. The instructions, well, you can tell this is an original. Look how yellow that is. All right, it is so yellow. It looks like bloody parchment. So, yeah, you got that. And the instructions, they're actually not bad. I mean, Airfix often, in some of the early kits, you had stage one, build everything. Like you know, an entire exploded diagram of the model with 100 parts all labelled, numbered, and off you went. The beauty was you knew with Airfix, you started with part one, and you worked your way all the way to part 100. And they would always have written instructions at the bottom, which were described. Now we've got some of that here. They still have sections that tell you. We're still part, starting with part number one, right? So we build in order. And that was a good thing about Airfix. You, you're building in order. You're building, so it's easy. You can, you can easily find the parts. There'll be no sprue map. There never is. Um, so look. There never is, no. Airfix doesn't really do a sprue map. You just work your way through, everything's there, off you go, and then you do get a nice rigging diagram, which is quite good. You also get figures in this kit, so that's quite good. So there's there's a lot of good stuff with this kit, and I'll show you when we do comparisons how they cope with their railings. Because each of the three kits have different ways of basically realising the railings. We'll talk about that. Now just briefly, because we're just doing an overview, yeah, everything's in this one bag. So let me open the bag up and we have a quick look at the parts and look at the quality. Now I had a check through online quickly because I didn't know if really there was any aftermarket for this. I've never seen any and I still can't find any. I don't think anybody supports this kit with aftermarket. Interestingly, looking out online, especially in Scalemates, at the timeline from 1975 right through to the basically the release there in the beginning of the 21st century, the red box they did, they renamed this as an S-boat. So it was no longer e-boat. It was e-boat all the way up to the 21st century. They whacked it in a red box called an S-boat. So there you go. So if you've got one and going, hang on, Harry, mine says S-boat on it and the plastic's crap. Well, you've got the new one. Now, plastic, this is the beautiful 75 plastic. It's hard. It holds the panel lines beautifully. The detail is crisp. Look, these are all the parts that suicided, right? They're the ones that are floating around now. If you've seen my build... Of the S100, you'll know that I had to hollow out all of the vents. But look at this. This is Airfix in 1975. You're getting vents that are already hollowed out. They're thin, they're beautiful. All the details fantastic. Even you've got the figures. They provide you figures, although Airfix figures, well, they, they go from reasonable to absolutely horrible. Sometimes they look like bloody um, minions. But um, these ones don't look too bad. They're quite good. I've got some aftermarket figures for my S100 from Revel. And I think they're Revel figures. They're Kriegsmarine figures that I'm going to put in the boat. I'll compare those later on. So I'll have a look. But the parts, even the ones here that have all sort of suicided out, they're all lovely. 
and they haven't broken well, there's no big thick sprue joints they've all broken nice and cleanly so that should be fine now there are 290 parts in this kit it was quite a big kit for the day quite a complex kit a lot of clear parts we didn't get clear parts in the rebel kit so you know the portholes and those sort of things clear parts admittedly there's not a lot of windows in the s100 but we didn't get anything even the um the breach on the s100 they just gave us a piece of acetate said cut this out whack it on there which is a little more to scale i'll agree but you know that's all you got now this is cute airfix modelers club boy this takes me back because on the back if a part was missing You'd fill this out and you'd post it to Airfix. I'd love to do that now, actually. If anything's missing from this, I'd like to post it to them. Although all you've got to do now, and I have done this, I have done this, you can, if you've got something missing, even if it's an old classic kit, you ring up Airfix in Blighty, right? You have to work out when their office opens up. As I did with my Stuka, I've got the 124th scale Stuka, original Airfix from way back, probably about the same period. Beautiful plastic, fantastic kit. I've given it as a gift because it, it looked like a wreck. And um, I spent a day going through the parts because no spray map. I found it had every single part. I had scored what is a 10 shekel or more rare classic kit for nothing. But it had one part missing, the clear part for the canopy. And that's kind of major in a Stuka. You know, Stuka's got a very complex canopy. So I rang up Airfix in Old Blighty. I said, hi, got this kit. I know it's really old. They said, no worries. What part do you need? I said, it's this number part, blah, blah, blah. Hang on. Yeah, we're going to the warehouse. Um... It's going to cost you, with postage, £20. I said, oh, great, no worries. And I got it in like less than two weeks. So that's all the kit ever cost me, was the £20 for the missing part. So Airfix will look after their customers. They always have. And as I say, back in my day, you'd get your kit and something had fallen out of that plastic bag that all the parts were in, right? And you would just fill this out, put it in an envelope, send it away, and an envelope would come back with this thing and it would be stamped you know, done, and your little part would be stapled or sticky tucked on there, and you would have the part you needed for your kit. Airfix has always been good that way. These days, with the, as I often say, the curry plastic, right? Just, it's plastic from India. I colloquially calling it curry plastic. Curry, to me, is not an insult. It's actually endearment. I love curries. I'm a big, huge curry guy. But anyhow, the plastic that's come from India, right, so we don't upset anybody, for Airfix these days, has problems, has lots of problems. The first run of every kit, there are problems. They're short shot, things are wrong. But again, you just contact Airfix, you ring them up, you tell them the part, the kit number, and these days they've got a stock number or a batch number, and they send you an, in you got one part wrong, they send you an entire sprue, free of charge. So you can't knock Airfix for their customer support. They are terrific. There are some woeful kits there from maybe the 80s into the 90s. A lot of people who have built those think that's Airfix. And of course, at that period, Tamiya's big and the Tamiya kits are infinitely better molded. But if you go back early to 1975 and way back to the 60s, the moldings were brilliant. They were state of the art in the day. They were building fantastic kits. Now this hull side is much crisper than the Revel kit. Much, much crisper. The Revel plastic, a little bit soft. It's not bad, it's good. There's nothing wrong with the Revel kit. But this, I can tell straight away, that looks so much better. And this is, you know, 50 years ago, nearly. Got some little tabs off there. I'll do a dry fit of this later. We'll compare holes. Let's have a look at the deck. It's sort of a funny arrangement. Airmix have done this so that you can basically do a waterline model. So you've got two hull halves that join up and then you actually put the bottom on it, which oh, well, it allows you to go waterline so you can do a diorama. Now, they've got the rope model on the deck. Well, I don't like that. I'd scrape that off. But the detail is so crisp. We will compare apples with apples soon. We'll put the various parts of each kit together. But because I've never reviewed the Airfix one before, I'm going to spend a bit more time and we'll go through the Airfix. And then I'll basically pull out like for like and we'll compare the parts. But look, that is really nice. And everything is hollowed out there so that you can basically, you're going to be putting in all the things. Whereas the Rebel kit, that's all just all solid, right? The 4 kit has holes there and we'll see all that later. Bit of flex because it's very thin. This is a thinner part than the Rebel kit. So it's only flexing because it's very thin but that is absolutely lovely all right so that looks good as i said we've got clear parts 
lots of them. Quite a few have suicided. I'll sort that out. Always with every Airfix kit, I have little Ziploc bags. I pop everything Ziploc bag and I've got a great big Ziploc bag that I put the parts in and I seal it hard, shut and tape it so that if it's in storage for some time, those parts can't move around and self-destruct. Now, sprues. Well, as I said, you've got 290 parts. Beautifully modern. I love these old hexagonal right, sprue gates. They're, they're just terrific. The parts are very crisp. The joins, the, the sprue, well, the, the sprue gate itself, I suppose, yeah. The part where it just joins is very thin. Uh, you probably won't pick it up. But just believe me, I'm just looking at it for you. Very thin. You've got beautiful little round parts here. They're all thin. They're all precise. There is no flash. We've got some railing there. And it is so sharp and so nice mg is beautifully detailed oh look i could gush about this all day you have got rivets on the side of the cabin beautifully done i mean this would stack up against the four kit in quality and this is 1975 technology i don't think it's slide molded will we slide molding back then i have no idea somebody will know shane knows good old shane he knows all about slide molding so um yeah you know, so I said, we've got injection molding and you've got slide molding. He said, slide molding is injection molding, you dickhead. Um, yeah, good on you, Shane. But it's different. So I've got a part there about suicide. Everything looks lovely. Even the screws, right? The screw props, which in the Revel kit are pretty bloody dreadful. But I didn't care. I just painted them up. No flash. Oh, a tiny bit. There's a tiny bit. Tiniest bit there. It's like a big surprise. That will clean up nicely and it'll look fine. Be terrific. Now, of course, this is a different model. This is an S7. So it's a shorter, shorter boat, different things. That seems to be a repeat of another sprue, it mightn't be. More figures. We've got a whole stack of figures in this, which is quite good. Now, see, this is what I'm saying about railings. You can cover your railings with cloth or canvas, as they did. And in the Revel kit, a lot of people put tissue paper over the Revel part because it makes it look better. Airfix have actually given you the part covered in canvas already. So you can basically do that effect. And this is beautifully molded with all creases in it. So are we picking that up? Look at that. Beautifully molded with all the creases in it. Okay, torpedoes, they look nice. Well, everything looks good. Again, little hatch there, rivets on it. This is so nice. I mean, we've got a little bit of damage there. Typical for Airfix, I won't bend it. If this was a new kit that had just come out, I'd just look at it and go, yeah, that's what I expect these days. I'd expect this quality. But this is 1975, guys. Right? So those of you who go, Airfix is no good. Well, pull your freaking head in. Look at this. This is what Airfix could do half a century ago. And they did do it. These are the tubes that the torpedoes come out of. And they're kind of exposed. In the s 100 and the S38, this is all covered with parts of the Armored Bridge and that sort of assembly. The um, These are nice. These are for the prop shafts underneath there. And they've moulded everything together. I mean, that's kind of good because it's always a bit fiddly joining all these things together. It does mean you would need to pre-paint some of it because this is different power to that. But it doesn't matter. It's nicely done. Not a problem at all. I am looking through rose tinted glasses. I will admit it. I am very fond of Airfix. I grew up with Airfix. That is what I built, you know? That was my first kit, an Airfix Spitfire, bought from the news agent for a whole one, one dollar Australian at the time, you know? And, and I had to pay it off 20 cents a week. I had to wait a month until I could, you know, get it and build it. And I loved them. I loved the kits. I really, you know, saved up everyone. I bought another kit, built it in a day. <laughs> Didn't paint them, just check the stickers on it, you know, the, the decals. And yeah. But still, this comparison will show that is still good. That is moulded better than the Revel kit, in my opinion. Isn't that interesting? Okay. And I always felt, even back in my youth and like in the 70s, I thought the Revel kits were poor. They were poorly moulded. I didn't like them. I was used to the Airfix kits, which were infinitely better. Okay, you get a little um, flag there. Which is actually still not in bad nick. You could use it. The um, the deck owls, yes, they're um, a little bit yellow, but they're still in good nick. And I've had luck 
we're putting these out in our lovely hot Australian sun, which is full of UV light, and burning these things back to white, and then using old Airfix decals, they work fine. If not, they're easily replaced. You can get very similar sort of stuff aftermarket. A quick dry fit, and that hole goes together really well. That's out of the box. The um, tabs that I saw on there, they're necessary. They actually click into the hull. I'll show that to you next time in part two. But there you go, a 50 year old kit, straight out of the box, no clean up. Oh, tiny, tiny scrape of a tiny bit of flash or burring. That's all I did, two seconds. And it went together in five minutes and it fits pretty good. I mean, it's an old kit, so it'll require a little bit of fettling and gluing around the bow. That is pretty mighty for the age of this kit. Uh, I've got new kits that don't go together as well from like Trumpeter and the like. I've rebagged everything so that it's nice and secure and safe and all the parts that try to suicide, they're in a nice little container there. Now in part two, I'm going to put all three dry fits together and we'll compare them. I'm going to compare each part next to each other so you can see like for like and we'll have a really good discussion about what's good with the kits and what could be improved and really which one's my favourite. Now, it might not be the Airfix. I'm leaning towards the Airfix. Is actually, I am surprised at how well this kit is put together. I shouldn't be. I mean, I know Airfix quality from the era was excellent. But I've just recently reviewed the 4 kit, blown away with it. And then I do the Airfix kit, expecting to be a little bit disappointed and having to forgive some foibles. There aren't any. It's a fantastic kit. So this is going to be a close contest because I know the Revel Schnell boat, it's not as well detailed, but it can be done up and it comes up well. It's a good kit. They're all good kits. Which one will be the easiest to build? Which one will be the most fun to build? We'll find it next time. All right. If you can't wait, though, there is already a dry fit of the S100 in its review and there's a dry fit of the S38 in its review. And um, you'll be able to see those right now if you want to know oh what are the other kits like but if you wait till next time there'll be a head-to-head -head comparison of everything Whew. well this has been quite a big journey today and that's why i'm going to a part two so i hope you've enjoyed that and um, big shout out to my patrons you're really making things happen big shout out now to my new youtube members i'll give you guys a individual shout out in a coming video uh, there's just so much happening now on Harry Houdini Models. There's an interview with Alex tomorrow. That's for um, members and Patreons. There's um, more of the Gooch videos. There's more of the instructional videos. There's going to be the build for the Schnell boat. Look, it is going to rocket along, really. We are taking this channel to the next level. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini. <laughs>